customer. Thanks for coming back to the virtual barbershop. We know you don't have to be here, but we appreciate you being here. And we appreciate you even more. If you go to patreon.com slash listening point and put up a dollar. You know, a dollar, a single dollar. 1.14 euros right now. I don't know what the exchange rate is when you're listening, but they're pretty close. That's not like you could buy a soda with that or you could help me produce new content every week with the help of all my friends who make this possible too by helping me out. Okay, uh, today we got an old favorite for you. Just stopping by from the down under, it's Cooper. Hey, Cooper, got some more for you. Uh, good day, Manuel. Okay. Good to see you again, son. Good day, great man. I'm gonna buy the guitar. And, and pretty good, right? It sounds just like it. I mean, you're getting better at it, that's I'm for sure. I'm gonna wrestle a lot of me and buy the crocodile. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> I don't know what to say to that, man. Well, I don't know whether to be offended or, okay, let me try or flattered. Again. Let me try again. Let me try again. And put another trip on the barbie. Yeah, you can just stop right there, man. Well, no more. No, no need to do that. I could, I could do it again. No, man. no, that's no. all right. We don't need to do it no more. No, this is a knife. No, this is a pair of scissors, man. Well, because you want me to cut this bloke's hat. How you doing, there, sir? Good to see you again. Uh, well, good to see you again for the first time, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, right. So, Manuel, what's new? How you been? How's it going? Oh, pretty good. We got some strong fans here. You gotta appreciate the fans for always being fans. That's good of you. You always gotta appreciate where you came from, what you did, and who got you there to begin with, you know what I mean? All right, let's just get you going right here. I tell you what, you know what I've been doing a lot of lately, Manuel? Wrestling alligators? Nah, well, that's on the weekend, but I've been forging steel. There was just a dude in here a couple of weeks ago talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's quite the interesting thing. I watched a show once where this dude, uh, he tried to make a knife, but he made, uh, it ended up being a, a, a boomerang. He made a, blade bo- a bladed boomerang? A boomerang. A boomerang? A boomerang. I have to say that again. A, bo- a boomerang. I want to know how to pronounce it properly. Bo- a boomerang. Boomer, like a lemon meringue pie? Yeah, only like a boomerang. You throw it, it comes back to you. Yeah, you may want to know. Anyways, what were you saying about forging? Well, for, I mean, it's a fascinating thing. You take this big wait, thing. Wait, 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 wait. You mean forging, like not like foraging? That's what I said, forging. Foraging for food? Yeah, like foraging for... No, not like foraging for food. Like you take it a big bill in the middle, you will... Wait a minute, it. wait a minute, wait a minute. Two-part question. This billet, what kind of metal is it? I mean, they use whatever they can find. Sometimes they cut it right off of a car. Sometimes. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How big are the headlights on this car? I don't know. They're pretty standard size headlights, I think. All right, get on with the haircut. I got to stop uh, asking something. All right, you, I'm just care, gonna... you tell them about the building thing. I got to play the game. So, so, it's really fast. Now, I have a question. All right. Do you think you could force these guitar strings into a boomerang? I mean, yeah, actually, I think you could. If they're made of a high-quality steel or high-carbonate steel, what you could do is you take them between, I don't know, three or four pieces of high-carbon steel or a, or a high-carbon and a low-carbon steel, and you wrap them in there, and then you forge weld them together. That's nickel wound. That's nickel. Oh, I don't know about that. You know what would be really cool? It would be cool in the handle of a knife or a sword or an axe. Or, or a boomerang. Or a boomerang, yeah. I, I don't know how well it would work in a boomerang. All right, so I have no more questions for me, though. All right. Well, so what you do is they take these billets and they stick them in these big ass forges for a propine, and then a lot of times they give them a challenge to do. So they have to like, all right, take this, take this box, this box of steel, fill it with like ball bearings and powdered metal, which I didn't even know was a thing. Powdered metal, you put it in the thing, and then you you put it in the uh, it's called a uh, uh, can, canister, okay, canis, okay. canister Damascus. That's can Damascus. <laughs> yeah, canister Damascus. Is it anything like canned ham? No, it's not anything. Well, I guess the only thing it has in common is they're both in a can. And they're both kind of a pain in the ass to open. Damascus. Damascus is a type of steel that when you forge two kinds of steel or three kinds of steel or several kinds of steel together, you layer them and then you fold them on top of each other like how they used to make samurai swords. Them katanas or tantos or wakashabis, however you say it. Wakashis. Wakashis, yeah, that's the one. Oh, I got a really good idea. Okay, okay. So, man, I really got to play the guitar. Uh, you could forge. You ever seen this show? It's really cool. It's called Goblin Slayer. I have seen Goblin Slayer. I'm actually an episode behind. I tried watching it on the flight over and I pissed right out. I 
show. It's pretty wild show. I want to make that sword and his. Oh, his short sword and his yeah, his short sword and his yeah. sword and his circular his shield, goblin his goblin slayer tools. And then what about uh, what about the the uh, the uh, the witch's the witch's staff with the rings? That'd be pretty cool to say. I mean, it wouldn't be of high value weapon unless you were an actual priestess that could summon the miracles and things that she does. I summoned the miracle. Yeah? Yeah. What was the miracle? Well, I don't like to brag, but I put water that was 400 parts per million of undissolved solids into a zero water filter, and when it came out, there was zero parts per million undissolved solids. Wow, that's pretty impressive, man. Yeah, I could do that all day long. Just you keep the water flowing. I can do gallons and gallons of it. Well, where do you keep the filter? Is that something like you put in your That's mouth and it comes? secret. So you don't. That's a secret miracle. But I can't tell you where the miracle comes from. Everybody will want to steal my miracles. I gotta use that to big to fund my dating website. You got a dating website? Yeah, me and this guy we gotta work on is called BigTittyGothGirlfriend.com. I think I've seen early designs of that. Well, maybe, but everybody wants. I mean, they are a lot of fun. They just... You did a big titty goth girlfriend one time? I, I, you know, I did in high school. I did indeed. I guess goth was more of a thing in the late 90s. Yeah, well, it, well, it's it's everywhere. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's not a thing. It's people that... It's yeah. a fad. It's not a fad. It's, it's, black it's, fingernail it's, polish, black lipstick, black hair. I'm into it, though. Pale skin. I like it. Yeah, they look like porcelain skin, black hair. No, I get it too. It's a very, sh- it's it's a, it's one of those things where you sit, it's and you're a like, lot of contrast. Yeah, yeah. Hard to take a picture with those kind of girls though, because like the flash goes off and they look like a ghost with wearing a black wig. Well, what, what if you lit? Sometimes they got so much eye makeup on it just looks like a wig and eyeball sitting next to you. Yeah, you know what? I had a snake like that once. Me and Bindi, she was an albino snake, and one day. One day we got a little too drunk, and uh... You got my brother, I want to have a minute here. Your snake got drunk? Yeah. I, I fed her a drunken rat. Oh, I get it. So you give the rat alcohol, and then the snake eats the well, rat. Well, yeah, you soak the rat in alcohol, and then you give it to the snake, and she's That doesn't like, sound very tasty. Well, she enjoyed it very much. It was a nice bourbon that I soaked it in for a couple days. Fed it to Bindi. She ate it, and she was very wobbly, very friendly. So I was like, you know what, Bindi, I'm going to put some makeup on you, because just why not? And I put a wig on her, and I took a picture. Wait and a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> you took a snake, and you got the snake drunk, and then you put a wig on it, and then eye makeup? Yeah, why not? What's the big deal? Well, it seems cruelty to animals, maybe. Well, I use cruelty-free makeup. It wasn't animal-tested. Well, now it was. No, what if you gave that snake an allergic reaction? Well, if what was, if she couldn't have shed her skin or something? Well, I cleaned it off really well. I'm not gonna. Ask well, you. then when she shed, when actually when she when she did shed her skin, the makeup was a bit still there. So now I have this puppet that has black eyes, and I can put the puppet and I can put the wig back on the puppet, and I go. Oh hello, my name's Bindi. I'm the snake skin. It's real funny. The kids love it. I, I, you're weirder than I am, sir. Nah, I mean, we just have nothing else to do down there, you know what I mean? I thought you guys, like, shot yourselves out of catapults and threw bended sticks and stuff. I think you're really, you're talking about the aboriginals down there, mate. But anyways, yeah, we know, we, we're thrill seekers, yeah. We like doing bungee jumps and skydiving and swimming with sharks and our, our reef is all fucked up, but... Probably because you keep putting makeup on it. Now, actually, it's the sunscreen that most people use. There's a lot of chemicals in it that really get released into the water. They don't and think it, about that, do they? Yeah, no, no, they didn't at all. And that's what a lot of it was. You'd be surprised at what you're putting on your skin and what comes off in the water. That's why you got to be really careful to get the all-natural sunscreens and things like that so you don't kill things anymore. Wow, that haircut looks real good, though. Well, you know, I've gotten pretty good at it. I've been doing it a lot. I'll ask you not to put makeup and a wig on the customer. Well, I wouldn't dream of it. She's not a snake and she's not drunk. Okay, well, you have fun with those drunken snakes. The customer will have fun and uh, see us next time. And uh, thanks for coming to Virtual Barbershop. And if you support it on Patreon.com slash listening point, thank you even more. Bye-bye.